Here we go. He, he, this, these will be the biggest fighters of the night. And this is, I always love seeing heavyweights because there's that thing with heavyweights where it can end at any time with yep. the amount of power they've got Oh, there. my goodness, yeah. It's all on the line all the time with the heavyweights. And this is going to be exciting. I always like seeing these bigger uh, fighters go. Yeah, and if you folks haven't been out here to the Melrose Ballroom, I'd recommend catching it yeah. uh, on, uh, if you can catch it at the next event. Uh, I know the, it's a pro and con thing. The con, you will not get to hear the sweet sounds of myself and Coop. It's unfortunate. Yes. But you will be able to get absolutely trashed at the three bars that are <laughs> surrounding this, this entire arena. We've got three bars. We've got a, a, it's a great vibe. It's a great atmosphere. There's nothing quite like seeing it in person and feeling that action, seeing it right 100%. in front of you. So definitely recommend you getting out here. Yeah. And you can come say hi to us, take pictures. Yeah, absolutely. And you can follow RFC Promotions at rfc.promotions. You can follow me at Liam Talks Fights. And you can follow Coop at Coop with three O's, C O O O P T V. And we are going to get this second fight underway. Yeah. What is there to say about Jaden Allier? He's mostly competed in jiu-jitsu. He actually got gold at the Jiu-Jitsu World League Open in Boston. And a little fun fact, he actually has a, a pretty sizable following on Instagram. I saw he does a show for himself. So not only is he an athlete, but he's also an entertainer and just an absolute specimen. I mean, you see this guy walking through. And to your point, Liam, I mean, this guy is humongous. He's so tall they're having a problem getting the sweatshirt off. Yeah. 6'3". <laughs> you see Tito Hartz there out of the Bronx Combat Club. Uh, helping his charge get into the ring there. I think they might have to cut him off, cut, cut the sweatshirt off him. Uh, you know, he he told uh, he told us that you know he has competed in BJJ. Clearly, he's a different striking BJJ. But he said having that performance mindset going into competition, dealing with that pressure. Yeah. He says he feels it's going to carry over here in his debut at the K series. Yeah, and a very stoic guy. I mean, you'd think for an entertainer that he'd be a little bit more uh, loud mouth or kind of uh, a little bit more austacious. He's just very quiet. All righty, Jordan Bartlett also making his debut tonight. He fights out of New York, and he's fighting out of Glory MMA gym. Here he comes. You see him with his coach there, Mike Kim, coming out here. Jordan Bartlett, 6'4", so whew, Chris Romulo. Oh, buddy. He's going to have his he's gonna have his job cut out for him. Oh, my goodness. Jordan Bartlett just turned 18, stepping over the ropes like they weren't even there. 6'4 at 18? That is That's, a big guy. Woo! That is a lot of power coming at you. Absolutely. And he told us, look, I've trained hard for this. It's the ultimate test. I'm ready for it. And there's no rolling of the dice. Prepare, aim, fire. And he just dropped his mouthpiece. Wow, yeah. But to illustrate your point, it draws the bow right in the right in the That ring. was almost on cue. We did not plan yeah. that, but it's just uh, meant to be. And he's having someone else. Oh, he's got the, the gloves on. Yep. He said this was the first step of many for him getting into this ring. And for the official announcement to get this debut for both of these 205 pounders, we go to Mike Falvo. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest on the card for K-Series kickboxing is in our 205 pound division, scheduled for three two minute rounds. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner, representing Bronx Combat. Jaden Allier! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, representing Glory Mixed Martial Arts, Jordan Bartlett. Glory with a number of fighters on the card tonight. You can hear the and support the in the audience. And the in the ring for this yep. action is Mr. Chris Romulo. So reliable is Chris Romulo. Here we go. Three two-minute rounds again, as is the case for most of the amateur bouts this evening. I'm excited for this one, man. I think it's uh, the, the amount of power that these guys probably possess, especially Allier with his, his jiu-jitsu background. I mean, you got to think this is going to be a fire fest. And, oh, and they are starting out nice, early. Yep, nice yeah. opening shots from Allier, but now Barlett pouring on the pressure. Nice knees. Oh, solid hand. And that might have that hurt Allier a little bit. And you can see the energy coming out of Jordan Bartlett, as we saw in the intro, as it's carrying over into this first round. Yes. As if it weren't enough that we got a heavyweight bout, we've got an absolute firefight that almost guarantees a finish. Nice technical boxing from Allier. You've got a combined 410 pounds oh of, my goodness. of shots going on in there. A lot of combat happening in that ring. And it looks oh, like he yeah. stumbled out. Allier. Allier's hurt. 
Oh, you just need to stay composed. But now Barlett's charging forward. Now in K1, under these rules, clinching is not allowed. Yep. That's why you see the break rather quickly there. I believe referee Chris Romulo said something about that to Bartlett earlier. Jordan Bartlett in the red, Allier yep. in the blue. And just shot after shot is landing for Bartlett, and every shot seems to rock Allier in, a, in a, even a, a small way. Nice low kick from uh, Allier there. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Solid right hand. And it's not to say that, that Allier isn't landing, because Allier is landing. It just, you talk about the difference in power, it seems like Bartlett's got it. It seems like he's a little more accurate, too, with his shots, too. Yeah, yep. And it's, he's doing a really good job, too, of every time that Allier throws, just, just coming in and countering really quick, catching him in the middle of his combinations. Really interrupting him, not letting him. Oh, another solid knee. I tell you, Bartlett's really nice with those knees. Yes. Oh, it looks like uh, Allier, with some of those shots hit, you can see him kind of pause and come back a that's little bit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why I think it's, it's really hurting him in there, and it's only a matter of time. He needs to be careful. Ten seconds remain. Referee Chris Romulo fast on his feet to get out of the yeah. way. <laughs> I would be too. And the end of round number one. Wow. Safe to say we could score that for Bartlett. I would say that was that was Bartlett's round there. Uh, Alia taking a little bit longer to get started. Wow, that was a lot of power going in there. And Alia, we, we we obviously he's closer to us, and he just. Went over to his ringside, he's going to sit down there. Of course, obviously, as I was saying earlier, Bartlett, you see the difference there, standing up while Allier is sitting, and his coach is keeping his feet elevated. I'm not sure I've seen that before, but he did, when he came over, lean on the ropes. The man we're looking at now leaned on the ropes and kind of gave his head a little shake, mm. if that's any indication for where his mental is at or perhaps even that he's trying to clear the cobwebs a little bit. I think that he's just trying, I think he, he realizes that round did not go his way and he would like to change the trajectory of this fight. You see Tito Hart's in the corner with uh, out of Bronx combo with Allier and Mike Kim from Glory MMA there with Jordan Bartlett. Yeah, we were saying how Chris Romulo is quick to get out of the way before. I f I'm happy we're at a safe distance here from these yeah. behemoths of men. When they walked out, the stage was, <laughs> you know, it was going crazy. And of course, a packed out crowd here the second of three two-minute rounds between these two massive men. We're going to see Ken Allier in the blue turn the tide. Yep. From Jordan Bartlett in the red. To your point, this is a big round. If Allier wants to be back in this fight, head kick nearly lands there. He needs to get this round here. He needs to make a statement. And he's doing a good job early. It definitely seems like Jordan Bartlett is showing the, the bigger toolbox, so to speak. Yes. Throwing a lot more weapons, a lot throwing head kicks, throwing knees. And you know what? I mean, not to take anything away from heavyweights, but very technical for a heavyweight. And absolutely. V very good technique. Good job checking the kick there. Allier's just got to continue to try to push the pace. And, uh, there. Yeah, that was a slip. That wasn't a drop. And if, if you're Bartlett, I mean, do you look? You look for the kill shot, basically. You're not really trying to not necessarily take this round off, but. Why overextend yourself where you can find opportunities? I mean, you've done it in the first round. You see he's trying to get more technical, stay behind his kicks, and just look for openings. I, I think that's a fantastic idea. There's no reason to put yourself in any danger right now. Absolutely. Great point. I mean, why, why send his out there? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Exactly. And you see, you don't even see the same offensive output. You just see him start to kind of pick Allier apart a little bit. And Allier now is forced to unfortunately have to kind of get in Bartlett's face if he wants to, as we said, take this round back. We saw some slick head movement there. A very unusual move there from Bartlett as uh, Allier threw that winging shot, ducked right underneath. Very nice. Yeah, and, and if we're talking about defense, man, I mean, Bartlett's done a great job of keeping his hands in his head, you know. Uh, Allier is kind of keeping him a little bit down when he throws, but you, you see the way that Bartlett, nice oh, combination. He might have hurt him there. What a back and forth affair. And that's what we were saying about heavyweights. You never know. You can turn yeah. the tide with a solid shot. Ooh, one punch. Allier doing a good job now, chaining combinations together. But Bartlett now back on the offensive. Uh, and that's going to be the end of round number two. Oh, my goodness. End of the round there. Wow. This has been a fight and a half. Allier, Allier came alive in the last round half of that round. Three. And then Bartlett seemed to want to really kind of make a point in the final, uh, final few seconds there. Yeah. Referee Chris Long is coming over, perhaps to check if Allier is okay. 
and this is going to be a big round three. I want to see if there was a momentum shift, too, in the fight, you know? Perhaps Alier comes out much more aggressive in this third round. If you're his corner, I mean, what are you telling him? Alier, I'd say this has got to be it. We're going to see a replay here. I tell Alier, you've got to turn it on now. And this was perhaps where he got a little bit injured there. Nice shot to the body from Alier. Oh, this is the dump. Oh, not the dump, but the slip. And we were saying about a momentum shift, and we saw some of those shots land pretty well for Allier uh, towards the end of that round. Yeah. yeah, it seems like when he's pouring on volume and he's just walking forward with his shots, you know, at least it's a rule of numbers, right? I mean, even though Bartlett has a very solid high guard, some of those shots are going to get through. And when you're talking about heavyweights, to your point, all you need is one. Oh, Bartlett coming out Oh, scoring. my goodness, what an overhand. Cross over the top. Winging punch from Allier. And of course, referee Chris Ramos did say, you're allowed to catch the kick and throw one shot or take one step back or forward. You're not allowed to throw multiple. 205 pounds, 92 kilos. As Big L said, they got more keys than a janitor. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been a fantastic fight. And I mean, complimentary to the first fight too. We Ooh. get to see a finish. Now we get to see an absolute ball. Oh! Allier now surging forward. Always dangerous when you get with these two heavy guys in there. Yep. 115 to remain if Allier's going to make something happen. I oh, think my goodness. Bartlett oh. offering up his own offense now. Allier's looking a little shaky on his legs. Yeah. That might have that might have stung him a little bit. Tremendous heart being shown by Allier in there. Absolutely. Bartlett also taking his time, not rushing anything. Speaks to the experience that he probably has there. All his training and preparation. And you know what? When Allier scores, it's with those big looping shots. He's not catching them with just you know straights or crosses. It's always with those big looping uh, overhands or crosses. I think I'm very impressed uh, as a heavyweight with Jordan Barlick's the athleticism. Yes. Throwing high kicks, throwing knees, mixing it up, and staying in there and weathering those shots from jo uh, Jaden Allier. Yeah, that speaks to his conditioning Ooh. too. Oh my goodness! It's almost like an upward axe kick. Yeah. An axe kick that caught him on the way up. Nice jumping shots there, off tempo, off rhythm. Nice from knees. Bartlett. And he's probably going to cruise to a victory here. Uh, bar something crazy. 10 seconds remain. Great head movement. Very nice. Stayed outside. Pop. Real slick. Yeah. On a, on a, for Bartlett there. Got a bright future ahead of him. Wow, what a fight from both men. That, what a grueling, grueling yeah. affair. And respect being shown. Absolutely. Perhaps Bartlett sees family, girlfriend, someone in the crowd that he wanted to recognize. But what a way to start off the evening. Two bouts in the book, 17 to go, folks. That's only going to heat up from here. Action packed. Whew. I mean, listen, you know, listen. I, I, Arya had some great moments in that fight. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from him. But if you talk about who controlled the pace, who fought their fight and kept the fight where they wanted to keep it. To your point, I think that Bartlett did a great job of staying on the outside. And for a heavyweight, staying so technical, keeping his hands up. You know, again, it was a grueling bout. So you, you absolutely love to see it. And this kid's got a bright, bright future. See him there, shadow boxing in the ring as we get ready to go to the official decision. Yeah, what you said there about the technicality of Bartlett, he didn't get sucked into a slugfest, which can so often happen with these heavier weights. Yeah, 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 it would be easy, too, and you could kind of tell that that's the fight that Allier wanted him to fight, but he stayed technical and true to himself. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, so far tonight, that's got fight of the night implications written all over it. After three hard-fought rounds of kickboxing action, we go to the official judges' scorecard. All three judges have scored the fight 30-27. For your winner by way of unanimous decision, out of the red corner, Jordan Bartlett. So folks, 30-27 will be three rounds to none. It's, again, a 10-point must system. Lots of respect being shown between those competitors there in sportsmanship. Uh, yeah. 
the, the, the technique and the athleticism <laughs> of Bartlett, very impressive for a bigger guy in there. Bartlett is going to be a problem, mark my words. When you have a guy that that's, that's that long, excuse me, that fights that long, is that technical, can stay on the outside and still has power in spades. I mean, I, listen, Allier, respect for getting in there. He had Allier hurt multiple times in that fight. And I what mean, a chin on Allier to stay in there and keep going Absolutely. 